Hello, I'm Richard Murphy and I want to talk about something which is attracting attention in the world of economics at the moment and quite a lot of controversy. That is modern monetary theorist. And I've got to tell you, I'm sold on it. So I'm convinced not everyone is, but I therefore want you to know why I'm convinced. Now, I'm going to keep this very short and we're going to explain many of the issues in subsequent videos. But let's run through the basics. Modern monetary theory says that we live in countries where there is what's called fiat currency. Now that doesn't mean it's made by an Italian motor company. Fiat money is money that's simply a promise to pay. The government promises to pay and fulfills that promise by taking your money back when you have to pay your tax. And this is what we've had in the world since 1971. This is a fact. So that one should not be controversial. But what that means, and quite a lot of people find this one harder to accept, is that the government creates all money. And it must do. Nobody else can create money. It is literally the fact that the government is a monopoly creator of money. If you try and print your own pound notes or ten pound notes, you'll be in prison. If you rob a bank, you'll be in prison. If you create false bank accounts or try to claim you're a bank when you're not, you'll be in prison. All money is created by the government or in banks under government license. So this means there's only one source of money in the economy. Now that has really big consequences, which modern monetary theory points out, which is that the government can always pay for whatever it wants because it creates the money to pay for it. Now that means that it doesn't have to tax before it spends it can spend at will. And we know that's true. Let's look at 2020. The government has spent £300 billion it hasn't got right now. And nothing has stopped it doing so. It simply created that money and the Bank of England has funded it through quantitative easing. It's made the money. And money is made by simply saying that there's a promise to pay. The government says to the Bank of England, I promise to pay you back 300 billion and the Bank of England says oh that's okay then I'll put 300 billion pounds in your bank account and you can spend it. All money is made on the basis of that simple promise and recording it in a computer. That means the next thing that modern monetary theory says is that in principle the government neither needs to tax and nor does it need to borrow. So why does it do those two things? Well, it taxes to control inflation. If we didn't have tax, but the government could spend whatever it wanted, inflation would run out of control. None of us want that. So we tax to control inflation. And governments have got really good at this. We keep hearing fears that inflation will run out of control if the government keeps spending. No, it won't. Because the government has the means to cancel inflation by tax and by borrowing. Now, actually, when I say borrowing here, I don't really mean borrowing. Because the government can't borrow the money it's already created. How can you borrow what's already been made by you? Now, actually what the government does is offer people the chance to save with it. And we have to understand this, and this is what modern monetary theory says. When people lend money to the government, they're actually saving with it, just as much as you save with a bank. And when you save with a bank, by the way, you lend your money to the bank. So the money is either lent to the government or it's taxed, but it's always money that the government created in the first place. And that is what modern monetary theory points out. So what does that mean? Well, it means that the government isn't now constrained by its ability to borrow or its ability to tax because in fact the amount of money that's available to be taxed and the amount of money that is available for it to borrow or be saved with it is entirely determined by the amount of money that the government creates in the first place. But that transforms the way we think about tax and this is the next critical thing about modern monetary theory. If tax isn't paying for government spending but is controlling inflation. 
it's also liberated to do other things. It's free to redistribute income and wealth. It's free to reprice market failures on things like tobacco and alcohol and carbon. And it's free to let the government express its fiscal policy. That means its desire on how it organises the economy by stimulating some activities and taking money away from others. Right now, it's stimulating restaurants by giving incentives. That's fiscal policy in play. And so we're in this extraordinary position that the government has vastly more control, modern monetary theory says, of the economy than conventional economics has ever realised. And that's because all money is made out of thin air by the government. But it means we never have to ask the question, how is the government going to pay for anything? Because it just spends it into existence. When it decides to spend, the money is always available. So long as it then taxes to cancel that money, there's no consequence for us, if there are unemployed people whose services the government can buy. And there is a constraint in this, by the way, it's unemployment, and modern monetary theory says that too. One final critical point. In 2010, George Osborne became Chancellor of the Exchequer and told us that we needed to have austerity and significant unemployment and economic hardship and cuts to education and healthcare and everything else, because if we didn't, we'd be like Greece and we'd go bust. But we can't go bust because we're not like Greece. Why aren't we? Because we have our own currency, and Greece didn't, it had the euro. And we have our own central bank, and Greece didn't. It had a European central bank based in Berlin. So we, as a government in the UK, can never, ever go bust. Because if a foreign government or company or individual saves in the UK by buying UK government bonds, the government can always repay them. It just creates the money if they demand their money back. It just creates it. it. just tells the Bank of England to pay them. And that's it. We can't go bust. And of course, because people know that, actually, the government is the safest place to save with anywhere in the UK, because our banks could theoretically fail. Indeed, they tried to do so very hard in 2009 and were bailed out by the government. But the government never can, because it can always make money. That's what modern monetary theory says, and that's what's actually happening in our economy, but it transforms the way we think about almost everything in economics, and that's why it's important. And that's why I'll be coming back to this theme time and again in this YouTube series. If you're interested, click the subscribe button below this video. Follow me on Twitter, at Richard J. Murphy. Look at my blog, Tax Research UK, and I'll see you again soon. Thanks a lot.